Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I am Midnight Mule and this is the video for Game Week 31 for the 5% series. In this series, the idea is if you just choose players from the selection I'm showing you, you should finish in the top 5% globally, which means you'll do all right in your mini leagues. You won't necessarily win them, but you'll do all right. <laughs> okay. We start by looking at how the players did in game week 30 and then what our suggestions are for game week 31. So for the goalkeepers, for the expensive goalkeepers, Raya got 5 9 3. For the cheaper keepers, nothing. For the defenders, Arsenal got clean sheets, so Saliba, White and Gabriel got 7 6 6. The rest, nothing. Trippier didn't play, neither did Chilwell through injury, but it looks like they're both expected to maybe probably be back next game, maybe not. But hey, that's just the way it is. For the cheaper defenders, Bradley 4, the rest nothing. So there weren't many clean sheets this week. For the midfielders, Sun 10, Salah 7. And that's all really. For the cheaper midfielders, Palmer 15, Gordon 8. And the rest nothing. For the expensive forwards, Isaac 15, and that's all. For the cheaper forwards, Solanke 7, Munez 6, and that's all. Now the people I'm aware of that are following this system, all of them did get green arrows this last game week, so that was quite nice. But the range of scores wasn't massive. It looks like globally everyone got similar-ish scores, which is, I think, often the way. So for the upcoming game week, starting with the goalkeepers, Vicario's all right, but he does blank in game week 34, but you should have two playing keepers, so that's all right. Raya... Possibly the best choice keeper to have at the moment, but he stops you having three Arsenal outfield players. I'd rather have three Arsenal outfield players, but you don't have to. If you want Raya and goal, that's fine. He's probably the best one. Onana's generally all right, doubling in 37. Leno's okay, but no doubles. Neto's home to Palace on the way to Luton. Chances of clean sheets, but Bournemouth don't have the best defence. And they've got a double, but they're both away in game week 34. For the cheaper keepers... Uh, Petrovic's all right. Probably he's got two doubles coming up. Pickford's got a double in 34. Ariola's nice and cheap. May occasionally get a clean sheet. Although he did go off injured. I should have checked. I don't know if he's flagged at the moment. But he's cheap anyway. And Dubravka's sellable soon because Pope should be back. But home to Everton, there's a chance of a clean sheet there. And Kelleher, the Liverpool keeper. So we don't know when Alisson's back. If it was the case that Kelleher was going to stay for the rest of the season... He would be an excellent keeper to have, and he's only 3.8. But we are expecting Allison back, which means he could well be gone before the double. So there are no keeper transfers you should need to make this week if you're following this system. For the defenders, so Trippier still didn't play. He was injured. He's not worth bringing in, but if you've got him, he's fine to keep if you want to keep him. Because he may be back soon, and Newcastle does some nice fixtures. And in a few game weeks' time, assuming he's back, people will be bringing him in. But if you don't yet have three Arsenal and three Liverpool players, you may want to swap Trippier for one of their defenders. Virgil van Dijk, he was supposed to be in the system from last week. And when I was putting all the scores together for this video, I was surprised Virgil wasn't in there. That was just my bad. So he should have been in there from last week. He's a very good player to have. He's not going to maybe get many attacking returns, if any, but he should be playing 90 minutes every game week. So he should be getting the clean sheet points. Home to Sheffield United this week. Reasonably good chance of a clean sheet there. So Porro, perfectly good defender for Spurs. Spurs don't keep great clean sheets, but he's got some attacking potential in him. But he does blank in 34. For the Arsenal defenders, um, they're all worth having. And you want three Arsenal players by game week 34. And they're at home to Luton this week. So if you can get three Arsenal players in this week, that's fine. If you've already got three Arsenal and three Liverpool players, it might be you don't need to make any transfers this week, and that's fine. Save a transfer for next week. So uh, Saliba, White, and then Gabriel, the Arsenal defenders, they're great. Chilwell, he didn't play, he was injured. We don't know when he's going to start playing. He might be back for next game week at home to Man United. He's got some attacking potential in him. They got two double game weeks later in the season. So if you've got him, he's all right to keep. If you want to swap him for Virgil van Dijk or one of the Arsenal boys, that's all right as well. Udogi's all right, but he blanks in game week 34. Aiton Nori's a nice attacking defender and he doubles in game week 34. So if you had to choose one of these two and you were going to make a defensive transfer this week, 
Aiton Norrie would be the better one to have, I think. Gusto, Chelsea don't keep many clean sheets, but he has got some attacking potential. Branthwaite's nice and cheap. Everton will get the occasional clean sheet. Probably not this week, though, because they're away to Newcastle. Bradley's brilliant. Home to Sheffield United. Reasonably good chance of a return this week, whether that's a clean sheet and or attacking return. But he's likely to be on the bench by the time we get to the doubling game week 34 because Trent should be back. If you've got Bradley, like I've got Bradley, absolutely keep him. And it may be that Trent's return gets delayed and he's going to be a star for game week 34. But the chances are we're going to have to move him on before then. And LaSalle's nice and cheap, but then he went off injured. We don't know the extent of his injury at time of recording. So you don't need to get rid of him. Newcastle does some nice fixtures coming up and it might have just been a knock. So maybe he is going to be all right. The only reason I can see really to get rid of LaSalle's would be if you desperately wanted Bradley and you didn't have him or there were three Newcastle players that you wanted in this system and you've already got three, so you have to sell one. But if you've got LaSalle's, it's fine just to keep him at the moment. For the midfielders, Salah is still a very good player to buy. You really want to have him in your team if you possibly can. Sun got some nice fixtures, should get some points the next three game weeks but he does blank in game week 34. But after 34, he does have a couple of doubles. Saka, Arsenal, any Arsenal player in the system is absolutely worth having. So Odegaard's worth having. Fernandez, they don't double till probably game week 37. But I think he's all right every week ticking over. Foden didn't have a great game yesterday. Hopefully that was a one-off. And hopefully this week at home to Aston Villa, he'd do a lot better. Madison's good, solid player. Not a brilliant superstar. He's not as good as Sun at the moment but he's an all right player. Luis Diaz. So I did think about having him in last week, but I decided because we need to have three Liverpool players for game week 34, we should all have Salah. But then with Luis Diaz in here, we will then have a choice, assuming Bradley's out. We need two of Virgil van Dijk, Luis Diaz, Darwin. I think there's, or you could have Kelleher and goal, but he's risky because what if Alisson's back? So I thought it'd be good to have another Liverpool player in here, basically. But there are lots of good midfielders and there are lots of good forwards. So you, you've got plenty of choice here. For the cheaper midfielders, Havertz, very good. Lots of Arsenal players to choose from in the system. Havertz is a very good one. Richarlison's all right. He's quite a good player, but he does blank in 34. Personally, I wouldn't be bringing in Richarlison now if you've not already got him. But after game week 34, he may be a very good buy. So for Newcastle, I'm introducing Barnes. Gordon got sent off. So we know Gordon's not playing next game week. So we'd expect Barnes to get a lot of minutes. But Barnes is a very good player. Almiron went off injured. So if Barnes gets lots of minutes, he's got a good chance of good returns between now and the end of the season. And they're probably going to double in game week 37. So he is a good player. Uh, there are lots of good midfielders at the moment. And of course, he doesn't double in game week 34. But... He may fit in with your strategy. Palmer, very good player worth having. Rice. Now, Rice isn't as good as Havertz or Saka or Odegaard, but he's a fair bit cheaper and he will still get probably some attacking returns. So he's if he happens to be your third Arsenal player, that's fine. Garnacho 4.9. Away to Chelsea, then they're at home to Liverpool next two games. So not great, but lots of people are going to own him, certainly by game week 34 or 35. And he's a good player. Haaland, highly owned. He's probably going to get some good returns at some point between now and the end of the season. Worth having if you can get him without breaking your team. But you can easily finish in the top 5% without him. Watkins didn't come on for the second half. He's possibly got an issue, but the next game's away to Man City anyway. So I've got Watkins. And if we don't hear that he's out for a long time, I'm probably going to keep hold of him. But if you wanted to move him on, that's fine because after game week 34, we would probably sell him anyway. Isaac's a very good player. Darwin's a good player and he doubles in game week 34. For the cheaper forwards, Solanke's very good. Got some nice game weeks coming up and he could get some good points the next four game weeks. He's got five games in that period, so he doubles in 34. If you had Watkins, you might want to swap him for Solanke. Solanke's probably going to get more points in the next four game weeks. Hoyland, very good player. If you've not got him, not worth bringing in just yet, though. But you don't need to sell him either. Jackson's a nice fast player, but he's on nine yellow cards. So if you've got him, 
there's a risk you're going to lose him for two game weeks. So possibly not worth bringing in, but absolutely fine to hold. Kuna's nice and cheap. He's not played for a few game weeks, but we think he's probably fit. So he's probably going to come on very soon, certainly before game week 34. But if he plays this week away to Burnley, that's quite a nice fixture. Munez is ticking over nicely. He keeps scoring goals nice and cheap. So that's all the players that are in the system. None of them, as far as I know, at time of recording, are definitely out injured. So that's good. We know Gordon's missing a game week, but that's only one game week. And Gordon is so good, he's probably worth keeping a hold of. Obviously, if you want to sell him, you can. So there's probably no need to make any transfers. However, if you want to, that's fine. If you don't have three Liverpool and three Arsenal, then maybe you do want to make a transfer and bring in one of them because they both have very nice home fixtures this game week. And they both double in game week 34. For example, if you have Watkins, it might be worth swapping him for Darwin. So we now look at the suggested benching order and potential captaincy. If you follow this blindly, you'll probably do all right. If you want to do your own thing because you disagree with what I'm saying, that's absolutely fine as well. So the first keeper that I show you that you've got, I suggest goes on your bench, which means you will be playing your second keeper. And the first few keepers that I show you I think probably won't get clean sheets this week. So Ariola for West Ham. They're a <laughs> home to Tottenham. So I would expect there to be goals there. So he's got a chance of save points. Pickford's away to Newcastle. Both of those have got a lot of chance to make lots of saves. So they could easily make six or nine saves by the end of the match. So they could let in a couple of goals, but still end up on four or five points. Onana away to Chelsea. He's going to get chances to save as well. Vicario home to West Ham. There's a chance of a clean sheet there, I guess. Petrovic home to Man United. Now we're moving slightly into more chance of a clean sheet. Uh, Dupravka at home to Everton. Everton are struggling to score, but Newcastle are struggling to keep anything out of the goal. So there's a chance of a clean sheet there. Leno away to Forest. Neto at home to Palace. Chance of a clean sheet, but Bournemouth haven't been great. And then Liverpool, so that's Keller at home to Sheffield United and Raya at home to Luton. So if you had Raya and Kelleher, I'd be tempted to play Raya over Kelleher, but Kelleher is a very good choice for this game week. Regarding the other players, I'm not showing you Gordon because he's not playing. For the rest, the first two players that I show you that you've got, I suggest go on your bench. But of course, you can't bench three forwards and you can't bench three defenders. So Branthwaite, Chilwell, Udoggy, Lascelles, Aiton Nori, Gusto, Porro, Garnacho, Kuna, Munez, Watkins, Richarlison, Hoyland, Madison, Fernandez, Rice, Trippier, Jackson, Barnes, Virgil van Dyke, Bradley, White, Saliba, Gabriel, Solanke, Sun, Palmer, Foden, Havertz, Luis Diaz, Odegaard, Saka, Isaac, Darwin, Haaland, and Salah. And that's all the players in the system plus Gordon. So obviously this means if you've got Salah, he's playing. If you've got Haaland, he's playing. If you've got Darwin, he's playing. If you've got Isaac, he's playing. If you've got Saka, he's playing. If you've got Odegaard, he's playing. So that's already sorted out. If you've got Luis Diaz, he's playing. So look at that. So the first seven on here, if you, any of those you've got, they will be playing. Regarding captaincy, there's a very good choice this week of players that could get a good score. So Salah... I should think he's going to be the most popular captain's choice. Home to Sheffield United. If you've got him, he's probably worth captaining. However, Haaland, I think they're at home to Villa. That's an all right game. He could do well. Son, away to West Ham, who sometimes struggle with clean sheets. He could do well. Saka, very nice home game. I think that's to Luton. Chelsea at home to Man United. Man United sometimes aren't great. And Palmer's just brilliant. And Isaac at home to Everton. It's feasible. All of those get 10 points or more. I'd expect at least three or four of them to be getting probably 10 points. Salah's probably the safest bet. So I'd suggest you make one of these your captain and one of these your vice captain. And if you haven't got any of these, then just choose Arsenal or Liverpool player and you'll probably be all right. Saka could be Odegaard, by the way, or could be Havertz. They'd both be fine choices as well. As for the background picture, it's as simple as... I put all this together on the morning of April the 1st, which is April the Fool's Day. So here's some medieval fools playing football. And they actually look quite frightening, I think.
if you find clowns frightening. I'm not scared of clowns, by the way, but I thought that one at the front there looked a little bit psychotic. Anyway, that's the instruction for game week 31. And the deadline is tomorrow, April the 2nd. So you want to make sure you make your transfers. And by the way, the prices were based on Sunday's prices, because that's when I put it all together. So it's possible some of the players have changed by 0.1 million. I should have probably checked, but never mind. There we go. I hope you have a nice game week 31. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you later. Thanks. Bye.